Buju Kinamagi Nene Ireland Indigenicas, and welcome to this episode of Social Studies. Today's lesson Social Studies, Chapter 2 People of the Great Plains. You may have noticed as we begin that it said lesson X. That is because there isn't an actual section that goes along with this in our Michigan open book. For whatever reason, it focused on less regions than I wanted. We'll begin this lesson today looking at Earth and particularly Turtle Island. And we began this chapter looking at the people of the Pacific Northwest, talked about the importance of fishing, importance of the huge trees in the area, particularly the cedar, that allowed them to build large plank homes. The environment had ranged from mountainous to valleys full of forests. Then we went down here to the Southwest where the Four Corners region is. And we talked about the Diné, the Hopi, the ancestral Puebloan. And we remember that we called their homes Pueblos, some of which were built by adobe bricks, some were literally carved into the side of cliffs. Uh, pretty amazing structures. Um, they did do some farming, but of different crops, um, smaller game much more arid or dry climate. We also talked about irrigation being important to farming where you literally dig ditches to what rivers are available to you. Then we hopped over to pretty much this entire region going east, the Eastern woodlands. And we talked about the Northeast, which include the three fires, which is the Ojibwe, Odawa and Badawatomi, AKA us, talked about the Iroquois Confederacy over here in New York, Pennsylvania region, along Lake Ontario. Then we talked about briefly about the creek, which is in Alabama, Georgia. Um, there was mention made of the Seminole, um, the Powhatan were over here. Uh, pretty huge area. Um, and when you start thinking of the Eastern woodlands, I encourage you to kind of think about what have we learned in our Anishinaabe Bamadzawin classes about our ancestors, because that's what I want to use as your base knowledge when we compare with other regions. Today, we're gonna to move into the Great Plains. Basically, we're gonna start with Wisconsin, Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, but you can also consider Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, Missouri, Arkansas is all kind of this region. Um, this region, as you zoom in, is much flatter. Um, this is the breadbasket of our country, where now we grow a lot of grains. At one time, it was covered with herds of many thousands of, and millions of buffalo, which was the, the staple game of this region. And one of our video clips will talk a little bit about how we use the buffalo to do everything from tools to food, to clothing, to building the teepees, um, kind of like how we would also not want to waste, we had kind of wild wish gash while hunting. Um, while you will also always see teepees associated with this region, not all of our indigenous people here use teepees. Teepees were good if you're traveling, just like if you're camping here in Michigan, you might use a tent. Same idea. Um, as you're following the game around, you would want something like a teepee that's easier to take down and put back up as you move around. Um, there were other styles of homes, including sod houses, where you would dig a pit and you would put a, probably a wood structure, even though there's not a lot of wood here, and then you would put sod around it. And that would help protect you from the climate in this region. The climate in this region varies greatly 
in the winter, you can see wind chills approaching negative 50, negative 60. Uh, temperatures in the negative 20s, negative 30s up in this region. In the summer, it can go into, it can go over 100 degrees. So there are some wide temperature differences. So the people in this region have to always make sure to be able to adapt to what season it is. And you want thicker clothes and you want your homes to be well heated in the winter, but also be able to cool down in the summer months. And that's true for any place in on Turtle Island, you have to adapt to the situation and environment around you. Um, we do have another facts for kids page here that I will attach in the Google Classroom. Um, this is similar to the ones that we have seen for the Iroquois, the Creek. Uh, I believe there's one other during this chapter. And you can kind of look at a little rundown of how things are organized. You will hear sometimes people use the word Sioux, but that's not the name that they give to themselves. That was a name actually given to us by the given to them by the Ojibwe. Um, you might hear Lakota, Dakota, even Nakota in one case. Uh, their languages are similar. Um, but there are some pronunciation differences, which is not unlike the fact that it is speaking Ojibwe. Um, if you're a Dawa, you probably could understand it, but it might sound slightly different. Um, they did play games and have dolls and toys. Um, it says today that they play lacrosse um, and they probably was a popular game even then as the game had moved across uh, Turtle Island. Women were in charge of the home, men, were the hunters and warriors. Uh, we, you guys all are pretty familiar with teepees, so I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time talking about it. There are some, you could click here to see pictures of other styles of homes. Um, everyone seems to draw about the fact that they wore war bonnets, but that wasn't something they wore in everyday life. Um, war bonnets have a purpose, um, but it's not just, you know, like, hey, cool, I'm gonna wear one. Uh, despite what you might see in popular television um, that doesn't take into consideration the actual culture. Uh, transportation, horse became huge over the last couple of hundred years. There was something, horses allowed them to cover more ground and hunt in wider areas. Um, there was a case, before that, the canoes were an option. There are some huge rivers in this region, such as the Missouri, and that allow you to just take your canoe and move along. Obviously a drag sled, a travoy. Um, they were corn farmers as well as hunters. Um, though it says that they mostly gave up farming, that's not 100% true. For, that's not true for the entire region. Um, obviously there were some groups and bands that would have followed the buffalo, but not all were. Uh, you can see buffalo, elk, and deer were amongst the key foods. Um, the tools would have been similar. Uh, bows and arrows, spears, war clubs, snares. These are things that have been similar in different regions as well. Um, I want to take a moment and watch this little video clip. Um, this is from Discovery Education. It's about a six minute video as we kind of go towards wrapping up this lesson. So we'll go ahead and click play here. We call the first people who settled on the land between the Mississippi River and the Rocky Mountains and from Canada down to Mexico, the Native Americans of the Great Plains. The Great Plains consist of vast grasslands sweeping valleys, rolling hills, and freshwater streams. Few trees grow in the Great Plains, so there is little shelter from the scorching sun. The plains can be bitterly cold in the winter and very hot in the summer. Some nations that settled on the plains are the Crow, Blackfoot, Comanche, and Lakota. Cultures varied among these tribes, but they shared one common bond. 
They all survived off the herds of the buffalo that roamed the land. The Great Plains people were nomadic, meaning they moved from place to place. They were constantly moving because the buffalo herds were constantly moving, and they depended on the buffalo to survive. Since the Plains people moved around so much, their homes had to be easy to take down, carry around, and easy to build as well. So families lived in teepees. Teepees were made of buffalo hides and poles, very light materials. They were easily taken apart, carried, and then set up again. Teepees were made by tying long branches together and then stretching buffalo hides across them. People lived comfortably inside teepees. The buffalo skins were durable against the harsh wind and weather of the prairie. The skins kept teepees warm during the winter and cool during the summer. The outside of a teepee was decorated with paintings. Each painting was unique and showed the personalities of the family inside. In the middle of every teepee was a fire pit surrounded by stones. The fire was used to keep the teepee warm and was used for cooking. There was a hole at the top point of the teepee. The hole allowed smoke from the fire to escape. One family called each teepee home. They slept on robes made of furry buffalo hides. There was also room to store baskets, extra clothes, and dried food. Members of the same clan lived in a village. Villages were small. This way, it was easier to pack up and move everyone and their belongings across the Great Plains. The people of the Great Plains relied greatly on the buffalo for food, shelter, and clothing. Men would leave their villages and go on mass buffalo hunts. They only killed what they needed and didn't waste any part of the buffalo. Men used bow and arrows to hunt buffalo and other animals. Their meat was used for food. They roasted fresh meat on a stick over a fire or boiled it with vegetables to make stew. The hides of the buffalo were used to make clothing or teepee coverings, but the hides had to be prepared and softened. Women would skin the buffalo, then stretch the hide across the ground with stakes. The flesh and hair was scraped off. Then the hide was washed in a stream. Bones were used to make strong weapons and tools. Boys learned to ride a horse almost before they could walk. Their grandfathers taught them how to use a bow and arrow so they would grow up to become great buffalo hunters. Men were the providers. They hunted for food and brought it back to their families. Girls were taught how to take care of a family. They learned by helping their mothers and grandmothers cook, make clothes, and take care of their homes. Women were the homemakers. They were responsible for setting up and taking down the teepees, gathering wild plants, and cooking meals. Women were skilled artists and made crafts and clothes for the entire village. The oldest members of the nation were sometimes the chiefs. They were considered wise because they had lived so long. Elders used their wisdom to settle conflicts within the nation. Their word was respected. They also passed down their wisdom onto the next generation of children and taught them the Native American way. Carving was another art form. Men carved pipes out of wood or stone. Women made clothes out of skins from buffalo, antelope, and deer. Men wore animal skin leggings, a loincloth, and a belt. Some men wore eagle feather war bonnets. Women wore deer skin dresses. Children wore the same clothing as their parents. Everyone wore moccasins on their feet. Moccasins were made of buckskin and sewn together by the women. The artwork, the clothing, and the beliefs of the Plains people allow us to peek inside their rich culture and heritage. All right, we've reached the end of that video segment. The last part of that video was just wrapping up the larger video as a whole. Um, this video is part of 
will include a brief um, answer document in their Google Classroom, Google Form there. And make sure you fill that out. Um, tomorrow we'll be reading a little bit more about the people of the Great Plains. And when I say people of the Great Plains, keep in mind that that's a very, very general term. Not, not all cultures believe the exact same thing. And there were many nations on the plains, just like there were many nations in the Eastern Woodlands or the California region or any other region. Uh, make sure you're considering the comparison between the Great Plains and the Eastern Woodlands. As uh, Thursday, there will be a quiz kind of doing this comparison. And then we'll be moving in across the Atlantic to look at some of the nations of Africa during the Middle Ages. If you have any questions about this content, don't hesitate to ask. You may email me at mireland at psychchipschool.net. I hope you all have a minute of Gijigad. Bama pee.